Today we're going to do a Nintendo 64 save state overview, as well as micromanagement of saves in general. First off, as far back as Hack She Goes and then RetroArch soon after, originally we had an issue where save states could cause a problem, especially with Nintendo 64 core, as well as Super Nintendo 2010 core, where you would pretty much fill up your limited mini NES memory without realizing it and run into a C8 error. You would turn the system on, it would give you a C8 error, and you were unable to use the system. It was pretty much soft break until you reflashed it with less memory. And it wasn't exactly easy to know how to micromanage saves at that point, and we didn't have all the tools that we do now. Things are a little bit more advanced. So I'm taking a training wheels off the Nintendo 64 core, and you can now have save states. But with this comes a little bit of responsibility as far as micromanaging them. And first off, I'd say, uh, in general, you have two types of save states. One would be the manual save states when you exit a game, and you go down and you can make a suspend point. For Nintendo 64 and a few other cores, these are not reliable. I wouldn't bother making these for Nintendo 64 or MAME, for starters. They're just unreliable, and they'll either not load, they may load, or they'll crash or be corrupt. But the SRAM saves, on the other hand, which would be the game, you know, the saves that go along with the memory packs with the games, especially for Nintendo 64. I'm going to give you an example of this. I played Pilot Wing 64, and I beat one of the levels, so I have an SRAM save now. I'm going to load into it. These are far more reliable, but I'd still recommend backing these saves up, and I'm going to show you how to back these saves up. So I'm going to start the game, which I previously played, and I have my gold medal that I got in here. This would be an SRAM save, because I didn't actually make a manual save for this game, I just played the game normally. And I have the HMOD for the Nintendo 64 core, as well as RetroArch modified though I c so that I can support saves now. So this is fine. Now I'm going to exit out of here. Again, these are SRAM saves, and these are the ones that are automatically made. You can play like a hundred different games in a row and have a hundred SRAM saves made without realizing it. Even though you're able to do these manual saves, I wouldn't recommend doing them because they're quite unreliable. Just forget they exist and stick with playing the games and using the SRAM saves. Now I'm going to show you how to micromanage these. First off, the the one way you could get rid of all saves, all manual saves, all SRAM saves, would be if you go up to your options. And if you go to reset the factory settings. And you click reset, the reset to factory settings. This will not delete your games or your folders. This would just wipe out all SRAM saves and all manual saves that you've made. And when you turn the system on, you just have to click English again. It's harmless. You can do this. I've done it many, many times. But I'm going to go to the actual uh, GUI for Hacksheet itself, and I'm going to show you how to micromanage these saves two additional ways. So I'm going into my tools. I'm going into my save state manager. And this would be the second way that you can manage saves. Of course, when you turn the mini NES on, you could go to each game and manually delete the saves that you make, but you're not deleting your SRAM saves. That's the problem. These SRAM saves could accumulate pretty quickly. And you'll see pretty much what the memory is taking up of games that I have save states for, whether they're manual or SRAM saves. It doesn't take too long to pull these up. But we have pilot wings, for instance, and I'm going to see how much space that's taken up. So, for the most part, I did not make manual saves for any of these other than the Nintendo 64, pilot wings, F Zero, and Zelda. So, these are all on there, and you see these uh, sizes on here, especially for like pilot wings. It's nearly 2 megabytes, so you can see how these can quickly accumulate and take up your limited memory on the Mini NES. So the best thing to do is use Save State Manager and just manually delete ones that you do not need. And I have all these uh, 
SRAMs that have been made for games I never made saves for. So it could get pretty irritating. But anyways, I'm just going to delete the Pilot Wings one for right now. And I cleared two megabytes on there. You could delete them all through here if you wanted to. I mean, just delete whatever. Or you could do the thing where I showed you how to reset the system specs on the mini NES without affecting your folders or your games. But I'm going to show you the third way of doing this. Now, another thing to remember is if you have the save state manager open and you try turning your system on, it's not going to work. It's going to stay hacky on the screen. So I'm going to close out of this. I'm going to go into my tools. I'm going to enable FTP server. And you might be a little bit confused on how to read this, but it pretty much shows your IP address, which would be the host. It shows root, which would be your login, and clover, which would be your password. And I'm going to show you how I do this. I have these all on a little note file right now. Make things easy. I'm going to open up FileZilla, which is a great FTP program. And I'm going to copy this on here. You can just do the numbers or you can do the whole thing. I'm going to copy that onto the host. And you have to have the mini NES on for this to work, of course. My username would be root. My password would be clover. And I'm going to quick connect and it will pretty much auto-detect the port for me. Now that I'm connected, I can see all the files that are on my mini NES. I can back them up onto my computer. I can delete files, add files to them. Right now, I want to go into where my saves are. And I have it already in my little file here, so I can just copy and paste it directly into the FTP info, where it says Remote Site. These are all my saves right here. And I can delete them from here if I want to. Or I can delete them from the Save State Manager, or I can delete them from the menu themselves. But them are options right there. Now, for instance, if you start getting into the controller configuration and you screw things up, generally you have to uninstall RetroArch configuration and reinstall it to fix it. But here's another way of doing it. I'm going to go into here. And right here is my RetroR configuration file. So I'm, I already have a backup on my computer, but I'm just going to simply drag and drop it right onto my computer. Now if I start changing my controller inputs on a different core, and I screw things up, and next thing you know I'm unable to push select and start to do my RetroArch options, I can just come back into the FTP thing, and I can just drag this right back to here, and then turn the system back on, and I'll be fine. So this is a good way of backing things up, and you can back up your save states like this too. I would highly recommend you just drag and drop your save states, so if something happens where you turn the system on and you find your save gone, you can just drag it right back onto the mini, and I mean, that's a good thing to have. Now if I want to see what games I have on my mini, I'm going to copy the perimeters here for the directory pointers. And these are all the games that I currently have installed on here. I could add them or delete them right from here if I want to. Lastly, I'm going to show you the cores, where those would be. And these are all the cores I have installed. And as you notice... These are a little bit bigger than they are when you first install them because even though they're compressed, they extract and they're uncompressed when they're on the mini NES. So this may be like 4 to 6 megabytes compressed, but on here it's 21 megabytes. So this is pretty much how some of your memory is being taken up. I have quite a few cords here. So even though you have that 300 megabyte recommended flash thing, if you start installing a bunch of cords like I do here, you're better off flashing at 275 megabytes or less. Now the last thing I'm going to show you before we're done today is how I have my core set up now. I made two different versions of the cores. I have the save versions of the cores which allow for SRAM saves to be made. So if I load the Nintendo 64 core on here which would be the Gloopin 64 and I play Pilot Wings 
and be at a level, exit the game, and come back in, I'm able to pretty much continue from where I left off. But if I go into my no save version and I install this version of Gloopin instead, which says RetroArch no saves, if I go on Pilot Wings and play the game and exit and come back into the game, I won't be able to continue because it blocks the saves. So if you don't want to have to worry about micromanaging or you have a system that you know you're never going to make saves on, you can pretty much install the no save version of the cores that I have here. So you could you could pretty much interchange these and have like MAME 2003 no save or you could have MAME 2003 save. And the uh, thing about MAME 2003 in general is saves are pretty pointless on there to begin with. If you try saving it and then loading the save, it's pretty much just going to end up not loading or being corrupt anyway. So best thing to do, I would say install the no save versions for cords that you definitely aren't worried about saves for. Now we go into the save versions and install, if you know you're able to save Genesis, you're able to save Super Nintendo, you want to have the SRAM saves for Nintendo 64, then go with these ones here.